Are we going now? We're yeah. good. Everybody's got a piece of paper? Yes. Okay. So at the top of these notes it says rational expressions. Here's what you got to know. Rational means fractional. And at the top I got some rules to remember when you're working with fractions. The denominator of a fraction can't be zero. Oh, we always reduce fractions. If we're adding and subtracting fractions, we have to have a common denominator. If we're multiplying, we don't need a common denominator. We multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. To divide fractions, to divide by fraction, easiest pie. Flip to second and multiply. <laughs> Thank you so much. Flip to second and then multiply. So whenever you are working with fractions that have variables in them, you have to worry about the possibility of getting a zero in the bottom of a fraction. So we're going to worry about listing restrictions. We've got to avoid letting a variable turn into zero. On this fraction, this looks a whole lot like what we did on section P2 when we reviewed rules of exponents. Really about the best we can do, these are all factors. There are no terms in that fraction. So we can just reduce. 36 we can think of as 4 times 9. 27 we can think of as 3 times 9. Then we can cancel the 9's because we can cancel factors. We cannot cancel terms. So I just reduce that fraction and it turns into 4 thirds. Then I recognize, hey, the bases are the same, so I'm going to keep the base and think x to the 6 minus 4, Two. or x squared. And I'm going to think of this as y to the 3 minus 8. So that makes it y to the negative 5. And the last thing is, don't leave negative exponents. So we'll have 4 over 3, and x squared is on top. And instead of y to the negative 5, we'll write it as 1 over y to the 5th. Now multiply straight across the top to get 4x squared, and straight across the bottom to get 3y to the 5th. And here is the simplified version of the fraction. When we talk about restrictions, I'm going to come back up here and look at this original fraction x cannot be 0, because if it is, 0 to the 4th power is still 0, and 0 times 27 is 0, and 0 times whatever this one happens to be, it doesn't matter, it is 0. And we have a 0 in the bottom of the fraction, and that makes the fraction undefined. So x cannot be 0. And also, y cannot be 0. So these are restrictions. Trying to reduce fractions for right now because this page is all about simplifying. And here's the temptation. Can I cancel x over x? No. Those are terms. We cannot cancel terms. We can only cancel factors. As tempting as it is, don't cancel those. <coughs> Actually, there's not anything at all we can do to reduce this fraction. But we can make a note that there is a restriction. What value of x would cause me trouble? Four. Because if we plug in four, four minus four becomes zero. So the best we can do is say, this fraction doesn't simplify, but we will make a note of the restriction, x cannot be 4. We're trying to reduce fractions, because 4 minus 4 gives 0. What back? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. <laughs> okay. On this next fraction, um, on the top I see terms, on the bottom I see factors. If I can only cancel factors, the only possibility of being able to reduce that is to factor the top. Factoring that top is like we've just been working on in factoring. Greatest common factor? There's not one. I count terms, there are three. I first check to see, is it a perfect square trinomial? It's not. So it's one of these. We've got to play this game. We've got to find things that multiply to be negative 20. I'm sorry, negative 10 and add to be negative 3. Negative 5 times 2 will do it. So then we're going to split the middle. We're going to rewrite the top as 2x squared minus 5x plus 2x minus 5. You agree, negative 5x plus 2x means the same as negative 3x. I replace three terms with four terms, and now I'm going to group. And if I group these two, there's a common x. And that lets me have 2x minus 5. And if I group these two, there's a common 1. 
and that lets me have 2x minus 5. And then 2x minus 5 is common to both of these terms, factor it out. And if we take out a 2x minus 5, that leaves us with x plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite this fraction in its factored form. The top is replaced with factors 2x minus 5 times x plus 1. And on the bottom, I have x plus 1 and 3x minus 4 as factors. And now I can cancel factors. But before I cancel the factors, I need to make a note. There are some restrictions. Do you, can you look at this and tell me what value of x makes this parentheses turn into 0? Negative 1. Yeah, negative 1 plus 1 makes this parentheses 0. X can't be a negative 1. That's a restriction. There's also another restriction because if I look at the other parentheses, I would have to ask this question. When is 3x minus 4 going to equal 0? When does that happen? If I add 4, just solve this equation. Yeah. If I add 4, 3x equals 4, and then I divide by 3, x equals 4 thirds. If I plug in 4 thirds right here, I'll have 3 times 4 thirds minus 4. That's 12 divided by 3. I get 4, and 4 minus 4 turns into 0. So this is a problem. It's a restriction. I have to avoid it. x cannot be 4 thirds because it makes this parentheses turn into zero. And zero times, it doesn't matter what this is, the whole bottom of the fraction is zero. So these are restrictions. And then when I reduce, the reduced version of the fraction is 2x minus 5 over 3x minus 4. On the next one, when you look at that, I hope the top of it, those are terms. You can't cancel terms. I hope you look at the top of that and say, well, I can factor the, the top equally. That's a difference of two squares. It will factor to be x plus 3 times x minus 3. And in the denominator, this is another trial and error trinomial. We have to go through this whole process. For the sake of this video and to save time, I'm just going to tell you. If you factor this, it will factor as x plus 3 times 5x minus 4. Do you see anything you can now cancel? x plus 3 over x plus 3 is a 1. Before you mark it out so you can't see it, though, um, write restrictions. What value of x causes trouble right here? Negative 3. Negative 3. So x cannot be negative 3. If you can't see this one, ask yourself this question. When is 5x minus 4 going to turn into 0? What makes that happen? Add 4, 5x equals 4, divide by 5. If x is 4 fifths, if you do 5 times 4 over 5, and then subtract 4, you got 20 divided by 5. That's 4 minus 4, guess what? It makes this parentheses 0, then that makes the whole denominator 0. So this is a problem. x cannot be 4 fifths. Those are the restrictions. Now I can come up here and go, hey, this is just 1. It's a factor of 1 that makes no difference. So the fraction reduces to be x minus 3 over 5x minus 4 with these restrictions. Here's the real temptation on this one. Look at it right quick. The temptation is, can I cancel those x squares? No. Everybody wants to cancel the x squares. Don't do it. They are terms, not factors. These are trial and error trinomials. Can you think of anything? What multiplies to be negative 16 and adds to be 6? One's going to have to be negative. Plus 8 minus 2. On this one, what multiplies to be 24 and adds to be 11? So plus 8 and plus 3. So you see that now you have factors that will cancel. The fraction reduces to be x minus 2 over x plus 3. The restrictions have to come before you cancel. So what could x not be? Negative 8. x can't be negative 8. x cannot be negative 3. Okay, you get the idea. We'll stop.
Oh, yeah, yeah. So then we just have to find the restrictions. Yeah. Oh, yeah.